Oh, hey, you're still here. So you finished some other projects, but now you want something that will really test your skills, kind of like an advanced project like this. So let's build this advanced kit like this Nixie tube clock. I've always wanted to build one of these, and this just gives me a reason to do so. I love the way Nixie tubes glow, and I've never actually seen them in person until now. This just happens to be a perfect advanced soldering project for someone who really isn't a beginner anymore and wants a bit of a challenge too. The parts for this kit are extremely small and very delicate. They even require some different methods to attach them, which we will get into shortly. But let's look at the kit. I bought this DIY kit on eBay, and depending on what version of the kit you get, it can range from about $60 to $100 but for me this one was about 90. There are plenty of other kits available online, I've just always wanted to build a Nixie tube clock and it happened to require some advanced skills to do that, so it's a win-win. Also if you've advanced your skills to a point where you're working on your own advanced projects, you should check out PCBWay which is today's video sponsor. PCBWay.com is a printed circuit board manufacturer that provides a wide variety of options for prototyping and assembly. Their online store combined with their shared projects section offers thousands of potential projects to work on. PCBWay is now kicking off its Christmas big sales event for the entire month of December. Check out the available discounts, awesome coupons, and Christmas related projects available in their shared projects links on the main page. I'd like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video and be sure to check out the links in the description to see all the deals they have available this holiday season. Now back to the kit details. I chose the option with the Nixie tubes so it came with everything needed to build the clock from start to finish. But if you wanted a challenge, this is it. Step by step instructions are not really available and you just need to figure out where everything goes by looking through the build materials and searching for the right locations to install them on the boards. Yes, boards with an S as in two. One board has the tubes mounted to it, and the other essentially functions as a controller for them. But let's get into the tips for the build, and where do you even start? First tip, check the bomb and start on the first page. This bomb is laid out very well for this kit, and really you just go down the list during the install. Find the first item on the list, locate the corresponding spot on the board, double check that they match, and install the part to that location. Then repeat until you're all done. You don't need to know how to read a schematic at this point either, you just need to know what parts go where. Everything is labeled very well and if you are really stuck just take a minute and review the bomb to check where the parts should go. Once you break it down into smaller parts, it really isn't too difficult. And who says you need to install everything in one sitting? Take your time and it should go smoothly. With this kit, the website had additional help files and resources that you could go over which are not always available in other kits. I even found a walkthrough video of the build which I had to use towards the end to make sure I was correct about the installation of a few things. Tip number two, be prepared for this to take a while. Over a period of eight days, this kit probably took me about eight hours to finish in total. If I wasn't filming the whole process and had more time to work on it all at one time, I probably would have been able to finish it in about half that time, if not less. But it really doesn't matter how long it takes you. It's all about learning how to build the more advanced kits and level up your skills even further. Tip number three, surface mounted components are built different. Soldering surface mounted parts is very different than through hole components. You almost always need a tweezers and you need a way to install them without holding the parts too. Luckily one surefire way is to use this method. Add some solder to one pad or multiple pads if you're installing many of the same components. Then grab your part with tweezers and slide it into the solder while you're heating it with your iron. This way you can install the parts without needing a third hand. Then when you're done with one side, flip it around and solder it onto the other pad. They turn out great this way and it really makes your job a lot easier too. Tip 3B, check if the SMD parts are polarized. Unlike through-hole capacitors, these SMD caps are not polarized, so you can install them in any direction. If you're unsure if a specific part is polarized or not, you can always look them up online by googling the part in question from the bomb description. Double check the orientation of the parts if they are polarized though, since it's a pain to go back and swap them if they are installed backwards. Tip number four, use solder flux and small gauge solder. These parts are so small and the odds of adding too much solder to a pad are high if they are very close together. Add flux to the pads before adding your solder and it should keep the area clean and prevent most solder bridges too. Same goes for the solder. If you're using a really thick coil of solder, it's just not possible to do fine detailed work. Do yourself a favor and buy a smaller gauge coil of solder. You'll thank me in the end. Tip number five. Installing chips can be done with only two hands too. If you're out of hands again with installing larger chips, you can always try the same method in tip number three or add solder directly to your iron ahead of time. You want to get your multi-legged chips lined up in the proper locations, right? So add your flux to the chip pads, set it into the right position, then add solder to the tip of your iron. 
Then touch one of the legs while holding the chip in place with your other hand or tweezers. And once you get the corners tacked down, fill the rest of the legs as you normally would. The chips will be centered and look good, but you may need to reheat the first two pins that you worked on to even out the solder. But that's a small price to pay for making the install go smoothly. Tip number six. Don't bother cleaning right away. These parts are so small that the odds of keeping the board clean after each install are pretty slim since they're so close together. I used a soft bristled toothbrush with some IPA at the end to get into the little nooks and crannies and it worked pretty well. I normally like to clean as I go with projects, but this saves a lot of time since you can do it all at once right at the end. Tip number seven, once you're done with everything, make sure to check your work. I looked over everything at the end and noticed that a few of the pads didn't look like they were filled enough. This was an easy fix at the time and I'm glad I double checked, but please note that you can miss things. Doing one final check at the end to make sure everything is in the right locations can save you troubleshooting time and potentially prevent larger problems too. Case in point, I didn't mark off the resistors in the beginning as I was installing them and missed adding in these two. I ended up putting smaller versions in their place since I had extras and didn't even have a second thought about it. I even double checked when I put them in and just missed the extra packet of parts somehow. Once I tested the assembled kit, it just wasn't working right and displayed nothing but zeros. I was able to fix this without any damage to the electronics, but this could have been much worse if it was a different component. So make sure to double check your work before testing. This kit was super fun to build, and I'm excited to finally have a Nixie Tube clock for my entertainment space. I absolutely love the way this clock turned out, and hopefully some of my tips helped you with one of your own future projects. Speaking of future projects, I actually have plans to modify this unit for another project, so be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for when that video is released. I hope you were able to learn at least one new tip to apply it to your own builds. Be sure to leave a comment down below for which one was most helpful for you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.